Hi, how's it going? I'm Malachi Grubb, CEO, owner, engineer of Elite Automation. So the video title of this video may be a little bit misleading because it has cheapest industrial power supply or something along the lines of cheapest 24 volt power supply, something along those lines. Uh, and the reason why I made this video is because I feel like there's going to be a lot of people who want to get their hands on automation equipment, PLCs, different uh, low voltage componentry, and they're going to want to be able to do testing and whatnot, yet they may have a very tight budget. They may be a college student or whatnot. So I wanted to show you guys a couple power supplies that are something you may have just laying around your house and you don't even have to buy anything extra. So I want to start off with the most common thing that you're probably going to have. And this is just a power supply for a for a monitor or whatnot. Now, it doesn't matter what this power supply goes to because a power supply essentially is just a power supply. There's really nothing fancy or different between power supplies for the most part. Um, there are some different technologies out there for power supplies. And there are some power supplies that can damage devices. But generally, you don't see that on DC voltage side of things. If anything, you see that when you're trying to convert a DC to a AC voltage and, and, and trying to plug things up to that, that square sine wave or whatever that, that synthetically created sine wave. So whenever you're picking these up, there's a few things that you need to be worried about. Um, and that is the voltage output of this device and then also its current capability. Generally, anything that's going to be like a PLC and whatnot, it's not going to take too much power. So you're, you generally don't have to worry about that unless you're going to try to power a bunch of different devices. But you do need to check and you need to look because for some odd reason, this thing may be good for a half an amp at, at, at 12 volts or at, at 24 volts. Just a disclaimer, a lot of these are going to come in around the 19 volt range. Um, but, but you need to look at it and just see what you got. Some of them are 12 volts. Some of them can be higher. But you just need to look and see what you got. So for this particular power supply, it's 19 volts and it's 2.1 amps. And it says it right here. I don't know if you can see it. So it says the amp rating and the voltage rating for the incoming power at the 120 volt side of things. Uh, and you can even notice this thing can actually run it at 240 volts. You could essentially plug this into a 240 volt uh, incoming power. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that, but it's an option. Uh, so yeah, you just have the 19 volts and the 2.1 amps. So the next thing you need to look at is the rating of whatever device that you want to plug into. Uh, some of these have some devices have a wide range of like 12 volts to 48 volts that you can supply them with. Uh, some of them will be like 24 volts plus or minus 5%. Uh, so you just have to kind of look at that. And I'll try to show you all a couple examples with some things that we have laying around. All right, so here's an Allen Bradley PLC with the power supply next to it. Um, this particular vi device, powering it with that, may be a little bit iffy. And the only reason I say that is because they're looking for a 19.2 minimum voltage coming in. So a 19.2 to 31.2 volts DC coming in. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but it says it right here, 19.2 to 31.2. Uh, like I said, some of these will have a plus or minus. Like it'll, it'll say like a certain voltage, like 24 volts right here, and then it'll say plus or minus 5%. And so you just have to do 5% of whatever 24 volts is. You know, some, some devices could even be 10%. But those are just some things to keep in mind. I'm personally not too concerned with using these type of power supplies. Now, if I'm going to do anything strenuous with this thing, like try to plug up I.O. and stuff to it and do a ton of different stuff other than just like create some logic or, or put some IP addresses in it, you may want to make sure that you have something that's a little bit more robust and that can handle more. Uh, so like using something that has like a 24 volt output or a even a 20 volt output just something that's in that range as long as it's in that range I wouldn't be concerned at all. They're saying basically hey it can operate at this range and with that being said uh, you know, I don't think you really need to worry uh, and you know even at that point the only thing that I'd really be concerned with is like that the device is going to consume more power than the the power supply can put out and then you're either one could potentially have a fire the secondary thing is it starts to go, the device starts to go into like a low voltage state and it kind of starts to like flutter like on off and on and somehow electronically it messes it up internally. Now I'm going to bring you guys to like my favorite power supply and my go-to power supply for like doing bench testing and whatnot and that's good old DeWalt battery. So I'm constantly using DeWalt batteries to do uh, bench testing and whatnot. I bring this one up because I feel like a lot of people have drills just laying around your house. So if you have a drill laying around your house um, and it's like a 24 and it's like a 20 volt drill, 
um, you should be good to go with utilizing one of this on one of these on any piece of automated equipment. They, they're going to be able to handle high current loads because they're used to operate drills and whatnot. So you could even have this thing supplying power to a, a little miniature motor or something. I mean, you're even doing crazy. You're even doing stuff with these now where they're running lawn lawnmowers off of them. So these have the the capability. You're not going to have to worry about this thing catching on fire unless you're trying to run. I mean, I've ran entire main enclosures off of these uh, because maybe we have the the high voltage side killed or not even landed yet uh, for safety purposes and we're running the whole entire cabinet off of one of these power supplies that way we can still close the doors and whatnot and we don't have any like cables running out the front of the door to plug to plug the 24 volt power supply into a um, 120 cable so that way there's zero voltages above 24 volts which uh, in, in a f factory sh shop setting is uh, super safe that's actually one of the things we try to do with our systems anyway whenever we design a system we try to design everything that's not 24 volts in the other side of the cabinet that way when you open this side of the cabinet it's essentially uh the safest it can potentially be so kind of just want to show you guys this operating and showing you what you need to do now you want to may want to get a voltmeter out and test the voltage coming out of this thing um test it for the uh other device as well and you definitely want to test it for these generally there will be a, a plus and a minus on here. So for example, with DeWalt, they have a B plus and a B minus. These are probably our positive and negatives for the main uh, power of this device. So basically we take our little knife terminals like we have here on our PLC, because this is what we're actually utilizing to fire this up. But we just have some little eyelet type terminals right here. And we're putting them right into that positive and that negative. And then, uh, you know, prior to you ever using this, we put a voltmeter on it to test it or that it is our, our, our positive and our negative. Now, I didn't really explain this part on the other device that we have here, but uh, this is the end that you'll have on it, something similar to this. Uh, I mean, you could have anything depending on what you're taking this power supply from. But essentially what you need to do, while this thing's not plugged into the wall, uh, chop the end off of here. And for the most part, you'll generally only have two wires inside of here and you just need to test what's the positive and what's the negative of those two wires and then also ensure that that it's actually outputting 19 volts um, you could get lucky with a device like this and it may be rated at like 19 volts but it's outputting uh, like 20 volts because uh, even on the output side of a power supply their ratings could go they could swing either way there's probably a plus or minus to that rating of that that power supply so even though it says 19 volts maybe it's plus or plus or minus five percent and so it, it's putting it at like 19.5 volts which is perfectly fine to, to be able to operate like this PLC. Back to the battery real quick. A couple things that I did want to point out is, one, don't let your, your PLC or whatever you have plugged into your battery run your battery completely dead, uh, especially running it dead and then just leaving it because um, it can run these batteries that we've actually run, well, we didn't run them with PLC type of hardware. We put these things in some power wheels, so essentially we just put the hot and the negative of, of a power wheels uh, battery and connected them up to these and uh, let my kids run around on the little power wheels with these, which 20 volts does a little bit more than the 12 volts. It gets a little bit, uh, has a little bit more get up and go and uh, it don't quite burn the motors out. I'm sure I'm sure it's gonna wear them out a little bit quicker, but uh, yeah, it seems to, seems to be holding up just fine. Something else to keep in mind, now I'm not positive on this per se, but something else that is a neat little trick and we haven't researched this just yet, but these three little tabs that are in the center here, so there's three of them in the center. I think there's either switching on this side or there's switching on the uh, tool side. And what the switching does is it basically drops out power to the, uh, to the battery. Now, if the switching is built into the battery, then you can find a way to tap into this. And what the switching is for is whenever it gets into a low voltage state, it just shuts itself off. That way you can't have the inc incident of running a battery uh, because you let the let too much power get drawn out of it. So the switching will basically remove power from the battery. So it just it's like a hard off versus just running it down until it's at an absolute zero, which is that's what runs the batteries is running them to an absolute zero. But if the switching is built into the tool, I don't think there's nothing you can necessarily do about that besides wire up some little relay system or something along those lines, which could definitely work out for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some power on this just to show you it working. All right, so now we are fully up and running. Uh, PLC is good to go, and we're here we are operating off of a PLC. Um, I actually have a video where I'm wanting to like 
do some I.O. stuff and do it all off the battery and wireless communications. Um, that's coming. We're going to get to that. I think, I think that overall, it's completely impractical, but I think it'll be a good a good demo video, something cool, and, and kind of like maybe trigger some people's minds to what like the future of automation looks like and, and the different technologies and things we might see into the future. Um, hopefully, this video is useful for you guys. If you'd like, hit the subscribe button. We're going to be posting other videos that are different tutorial videos showing you all how to do some like rudimentary beginning level stuff that you may not think about if you're just getting into the space or uh, doing it more advanced stuff like setting up uh, IO hardware and, and, and overall just demonstrating different technologies, showing you guys how to get jobs in the industry. Just overall we want to immerse ourselves in this channel in the industrial automation space. Uh, you know that's our, that's our big target. Uh, robotic cells, stuff like that. So like I said, hopefully you find this video informative, informational, and hopefully you can get your system up and running with a little battery pack or something. Catch you all in the next one.